evening, everyone. We're, we'll allow a couple more people to trickle in. And tonight, we'll, we will be recording the conversation. So if you're uncomfortable with that, um, this is your cue to leave. So I guess the example would be on slide 23 for the function. Thank you everyone for um, muting yourselves, unless you are one of our speakers or you're unmuting to ask a question. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started this evening. Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Brooke Berry, and I'm the Dean of Students Equity and Inclusion here at Marymount University. So tonight, as part of our Black History Month celebration, we are having a career conversation about cybersecurity and information technology. And we're so excited to have our special guest, Ms. Lanye Ford. Thank you, Lanye, for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me, Dean Brown. So Lanye is a proven leader that has been able to insert herself into a, a competitive industry through hard work, leveraging resources that were amassed through many years of prior work experience. Together, Lanye and her business partner, Arlene Wube, founded Arlo and have worked to achieve many accomplishments. Arlene, excuse me, Lanye served 10 years in the United States Air Force, and she acquired expertise in cybersecurity and information assurance. As a government contractor for over nine years, she has managed large scale projects and portfolios. With in depth knowledge of information technology, Lanye is leading Arlo into new frontiers. She serves as a trusted advisor to government agencies who rely on her guidance and leadership influence to help, make the, to help the government make cyber smart decisions as it relates to acquisitions and managing risks. For example, Lanye took the lead on cybersecurity risk management framework, policy government, governance, strategy compliance, and statutory requirements for the Air Force. In this role, Lanye and the Arlo team authored the Air Force's RMF roadmap as well as the first ever cybersecurity strategy for critical infrastructure, a presidential mandate. Lanye and her team provided the initial implement implementation plan for the NIST cybersecurity framework and coordinated across the Air Force in the development of the risk executive function for the Air Force to include charter development. And I don't even know what all that means, but it's really <laughs> important. She did an amazing job <laughs> with that. So I'm really looking forward to hear her talk about those experiences. Facilitating tonight's discussion is student leader Alexis Jones. Alexis is a senior majoring in information technology, specializing in information systems. Ms. Gardner Ford is doing this thing live. Oh, okay. for IT professionals. Uh -huh. Like, is that Black College a little bit? Oh, okay. So she's like a... Can you meet those people? She's a guest speaker because she's CEO of a cybersecurity company. Okay, they're muted. Thank you. Alexis is a senior majoring in information technology, specializing in information systems. She's a student leader serving as a community assistant at the Rixie Apartments. She is super active on campus. She's the vice president of the Sigma Alpha chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She's a member of the Black Student Union, a member of the Inclusion Network, and a member of the St. Ambrose Honor Society of Business and Technology. 
Alexis is currently interviewing with Amazon and she hopes to secure the position of a cloud support associate upon graduation. So let's send her lots of good positive vibes. Ooh. Thank you, Alexis. Hello. Hello, everyone again. My name is Alexis, and I will be leading the conversation for tonight. But I want everyone to feel like they can ask their own questions. So feel free to raise your hand if there is a question you want to ask, and Dean Barry will let me know to take a pause. So let's get started. First things first, Ms. Lanye Ford, can you tell us a little about your story and how you got into this industry? I sure can. Um, first, I want to thank you all for having me. Um, I think that this is important that um, now we're getting the habit of letting people see the possibilities. Um, Alexis, I know that was one thing that you may have been concerned with too, just kind of seeing representation, but it sounds like you are well on your way and congratulations with this possible opportunity coming up. So I just want to thank you for having me and um, allowing me to spend time with you all. Um, um, so jumping into it, um, the question is kind of tell me, think, tell, tell a little about me and how I got here. So I'm from Chicago. Um, I always tell people I'm from Chicago, Chicago. So I'm from the south side of Chicago. And um, leaving Chicago when I was 19, I joined the best service in the world, which is the Air Force. So I joined the Air Force, one of the best decisions that I ever made. I am a proud veteran. Um, and so I left Chicago being around people that look like me, that spoke like me, that walked like me, that talked like me, then guess what? I went to the Air Force and no one really looked like me or talked like me. And I was also in the IT industry. Um, and so the IT industry in general, especially during those times, were definitely a, a white male dominated industry. So um, um, it was an adjustment, I'll say that. So my first position in the Air Force, I ended up going to this horrible place called Italy. Um, it was beautiful, and uh, but I was sad to be so far from Chicago. But my first position was a help desk technician. That was my entry level position. The amazing thing about being in the military is that you can start gaining experience immediately without a degree, without a certification. Um, they call it OJT, on the job training. So I started at the help desk um, servicing about 7,000 people. I didn't necessarily have an IT background. So that was a, a very good entry point for me to really learn the basics about a computer, about networking, about you know how data travels. Um, and so um, leaving the help desk, um, when I joined the military, there wasn't a, a such thing as cybersecurity. I always tell people I was in cybersecurity before it was sexy. Then it, they started this security field and I raised my hand to say, hey, I'll do that. I love taking all the hard problems. So I'll try this security thing out, whatever that means. So by volunteering, um, I always was the person people came to for security. Um, that, so I did security in the Air Force for about, I got the Air Force, I did 10 years in the Air Force. Um, thought I wanted a break from IT, went back to Chicago and tried some other things that didn't work out like retail and banking and um, just really came back to this field, um, this field that I love. And I always say, even though we talk IT, I'm, I'm cybersecurity. IT was the foundation I used to pivot to cybersecurity. So I like to um, qualify that. So coming back to, um, I ended up leaving Chicago and moving to the DMV area. Moving to the DMV area is very government focused. Um, so I got a government contracting job and um, I did government contracting um, in the DC area, I guess, for a few years. At the same time, I was also doing like promoting in DC. Um, promoting in DC, my partner in a promoting role introduced me to his wife, which is Arlene. Um, and we clicked like immediately and we just tried to figure out, okay, what do you do? What do you you do what do you like okay let's go start this government contracting company she's like you do cybersecurity. i'll manage the the business and so over a limit drop martini we decided to start arlo and so arlo she's the r i'm the low 
um, in Arlo. And now we have a um, cybersecurity, co a, a government contracting company that focuses on cybersecurity security as well as intelligence support uh, for the Department of Defense as well as uh, USDA. So that, that's where we are now and that's how I got into this um, industry. I'm inspired <laughs> and um, to transition for college students, would you say that employers are looking for you to have more degrees and more certifications in the IT industry? So let's say it depends. I say it depends because um, that's a very broad industry. That would be equivalent to asking, you know, someone in finance, you know, does an employer in finance want you to have a degree or certification? It depends. Am I going to be a tax accountant? Am I going to be a bookkeeper? Am I going to be a banker? So it all depends on what role you're going to have. Um, and so I'm, again, I'm going to focus more on kind of, I'm going to do a mixture because my focus is cybersecurity. Um, but I would say when you're looking at like cybersecurity field, if I wanted to do some very broad stroke bucketing of the type of work it is, you're going to have like a technical focus. And those are things um, like what you like what you may do, you know, like networking for the cloud, um, development work, penetration testing. I would say that kind of all falls in that technical side of the house. Then there's a side of the house for cybersecurity that's going to focus more on management and policy. So the technical folks, they like to be on a workstation. They're solving problems. They don't care about management. They don't care about making a process repeatable. They just want to go fix the problem. And so there's a group of people that do care about that in cybersecurity. And that's those, the, the people that do focus on policy, management, creating processes, making sure that things are scalable and repeatable. So that's another group. Um, the the third bucket, I would say, is a strategic, you know, a strategic type of person, a role in cybersecurity that that will be is a chief information security officer. So a strategic person is more about the entire organization. So we're looking at not only cybersecurity, but, you know, um, am I managing risk of my organization from a funding perspective? How would I pay for this security? Is my workforce trained appropriately? So that's more of a street. Where are we going to be? Are we moving to the cloud? Are we going to go to the Amazons of the world? You know, are we going to do our, you know, um, control our data on premises? So that, that strategic person is thinking of kind of those ways ahead. Um, and so I, I say that to say that depending on what direction you want to go in, um, is really kind of what would determine, you know, what's the best path. Now, my opinion, and everyone has gotten into this field in so many different ways. I just told you, I started in the Air Force with no degree. So, um, and my degree is in business administration to have an MBA. So there are so many different ways that you can get into this field. Um, but I would say a, a degree, one thing about a degree is no one can take it from you, different than a certification, right? When you have a degree, that's the foundation. Even if you don't need the degree now, when you when you continue to excel in your career, where you become want to become that strategic person, you already, you're going to have to meet the requirement of the degree. You already have it. So now, you know, you're just going to add on top of that with your certification. That's what's going to get you more streamlined. So if you, you know, Alexis, like if you're doing, if you're going to look at cloud, then you may look at a cloud certification because it's going to be about, um, it's really about winning, right? What's going to make you, what's going to be appeasing to someone that's looking at your resume when you're not there to give a voiceover, when you're not there to have any type of conversation, they're only going to look at your resume. That's the only way they know. And so if I have, if I'm looking to hire someone and I'm doing a comparison, right? And I'm trying to say, who's going to win this position? If I see someone that doesn't have a degree in a cert, but they did all these amazing things, but I see someone that does have a degree in a cert, guess that, you know, I'm going to go that route. Um, there are a lot of certifications in this field and um, a lot of people, and I'm going to talk specifically on the DOD side. I just like to quantify like what area that I work in and that's government. And from a government perspective, um, 98% of the times a certification is required to get a job at some level. You know, an entry level certification, if you're looking at cybersecurity, would be something like a security plus. 
um, and an entry level, maybe on the, you know, I guess if you're doing on a technology side, maybe network plus or a plus, I don't even know if they do those anymore. Um, so it, again, it all depends on, um, kind of what your path is and what type of, you know, certification that you should get. So I know that was a, um, a long answer to saying it depends, but it, it really does depend. But I do think getting that degree is important. I did a, I actually did a Google search last night just to see how many, how many companies are uh, requiring a degree for every position I've ever hired for a degree is required. So I just wanted to see. So I did, I did a Google search and honestly about 80, about 80% 80 of the roles, they are asking for a, some form of a degree and to be honest even if they didn't if you want to win and you want to be competitive you know the degree is where you want you want you want that degree okay and um we know that it is such a broad field with a wide spectrum but what are some crucial skills to have in it in general um One thing from a from a from a soft skills perspective, that's not necessarily a, um, like a technical skill. Um, a lot of people in this field are um, inquisitive, analytical, right? Those are a lot of people that want to continue to learn. IT is one of those fields that change rapidly. You know, a um, a um, software application, okay, I mean, it changed rapidly. You can be looking at totally different software one year from now doing the same capability. So one thing that, you know, coming into this field, you have to be ready to pivot. I think it's important to be passionate about this field because you are forced to continue to learn. If you don't continue to learn in this field, you will be left behind. You know, if you want to be in a field where you don't, where you can just uh, become a subject matter expert and doing the same thing 15 years from now that you're doing today, I guess you're probably going to have to do some drywall. I'm assuming that <laughs> that people doing drywall 30 years, 30 years ago can still do drywall today. It's not the same thing with IT. You really have to keep your skills uh, sharp, especially if you want to be competitive. So um, I would say that not desire to learn analytical. Um, you're really going to have to, uh, this is a, this is truly an analytical field, no matter which way you go, whether you're developing code, whether you're trying to, whether you're engineering a network, you have to be analytical. You're going to have to know how do I analyze what, I have this technology, but I have to analyze and cross what capability does this allow me? And is this, is this secure? And then once you get into compliance, the government tells you um, has specific requirements in IT. So you have to be able to analyze and assess, you know, Know, is what you're doing in alignment with this law, right? So it's a lot of analytical skills. Um, another thing I think that's important in every job, though, is being able to um, collaborate. Um, because in this field, no one knows everything. And because it moves so rapidly, you know, being able to build relationships and collaboration is also um, very important. So once you get in here, even if you get your foot in the door, um, you have to be able to deliver. So once you get your foot in the door, you you have to be able to deliver and continuously deliver. So that kind of drive to keep going and being solutions based is um, is also a very important skill. Okay, and um, with the analytical skills, students will have the collaborative skills, the soft skills that students will have when they graduate. Um, do you think it's appropriate for recent college graduates to be able to negotiate their salary in their first IT positions? I don't want to hit you with the it depends again, but <laughs> I will. Um, because it depends on what the college student did while they were in college, right? What if um, so I don't want to give just a, a cookie cutter answer because what if that college student was an intern in, for Microsoft and already working in a cloud for a couple of years? So even though it's the, that person may be a new college graduate, the person has experience. What's truly going to help you with negotiation um, with anything is going to be the experience. Um, so I would say, I would say for me, I would focus on experience. 
And if that meant I took pennies on a dollar for a job and I know where I'm going and I need that experience right out of college, my focus would be experience, understanding where I want to go in this role and going whatever and doing whatever I have to do to gain that experience. I would, when I first started, I would have probably worked for free, right? Just to gain the experience. That truly is the focus. Now, once you get to the point where um, you're able to negotiate, you know, and that time will come, Alexis, for you, um, what I would say specifically to you is that uh, don't be afraid to negotiate when you get there. You know, I used to always hear that women have a, a, a glass ceiling that they don't get paid as much as men. And you can research it, right? It's going to say women do not get paid as much as men do. And it is true. But let me tell you, sometimes we are our own worst enemies. I have sat, like literally interviewed people and I have, uh, you know, a man with not even as much skill set as the, not as much experience um, doesn't have necessarily the skill set and you can interview a man and even if they ask them something that they don't know guess what they're going to say to you I may not know that but I did a b c and d and now I'm, I'm a quick learner I will figure that out and I'll be doing that by next week and I want 50,000 more and I want 50,000 more right um, a woman to have all the skill set in the world, the certifications, the degrees, and she's going to be like, you know what? I didn't necessarily, I kind of did that, but I didn't necessarily, I didn't do it for that person. So I don't know. I've had women tell me, I don't think I'm qualified for the job when I'm interviewing them and they were the most qualified for the job. And then on top of that, when it came to their salary, they'll, they'll say, um, what about, uh, what do you think about as if they're thinking about it while we on a call, what do you think about 80,000? Does that work? And so that's the difference, you know, and that's something I want you to think about when it does come time for you to negotiate, because that time definitely will come, especially if you're in cloud, it will come very quickly for you. Um, but, you know, do not be afraid to negotiate um, and, and, and know what you're worth and negotiate and perform for sure. But yes, negotiate. But right out of college, just want to confirm the focus is experience, even if that meant internship or free. Focus on getting the experience that you need. The money will come. Thank you so much. And piggybacking off of having experience, does having work experience with many companies look good or bad to employers? Like, what is the perspective? So, what I would say is, <laughs> it depends, but it depends on the time frame. Um, I'll give an example. Let's let's say we're talking about a one year time span, and again, if you you want to do what's going to make you a winner. So if I'm looking at one year and 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 I'm comparing, if you're trying to get a job, I'm comparing multiple resumes. And on one resume, I see that this person has moved from five different jobs in one year. I don't care what experience they have. I'm just going to, that is, I would probably say that's one of the first things. Um, that's probably one of the first things people look at on a resume. I think I have one of our PMs on, on a call and we've just said no, just because we saw that this person was job hopping. And then if I see someone who's been with one job, for one year, I'm going to probably bank on that person. And I say that because starting onboarding someone, starting a job, training them, getting them into the HR system, you know, integrating them with the team, you know, and thinking to myself, there's a possibility that this person could leave me in two months, I'm going to go with the safer bet. And that's the person that's going to show that, um, you know, show some longevity. And I also think you learn, you, you, it, it shows you something whether right or wrong about a person's personality. So in my mind, when I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, why can't they keep a job? Either why doesn't someone want to keep them? Evidently, they're either not worth keeping or even if they have a skill set, maybe there's something from a personality standpoint that, you know, maybe this person can't get along. Why is it that this person cannot maintain a job? And um, for me, I would not hire a person 
And um, if I'm looking at their resume and it looks like they do a lot of job hopping, even if it's right out of college, I want to see a little stability because I'm going to think you'll be leaving me soon. And I'm, I'm looking for a longevity. Okay, because that's been a question for a lot of students here. So really? thank you for that advice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And have you seen any progression with Black women in IT? Um. Yes, yes, and yes. You have me sitting here. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm not, right? I didn't have the, well, even when we started this, um, started down this journey, I had never seen a, um, I had never seen a, a Black woman own a cybersecurity company, to be honest. I didn't know even that that was a possibility. Now, we didn't let that stop us, but um, there was not example there was no no black woman to model per se um and you know the progression i have to say that um i see progression in women i, I really i really don't want to just say black women i think in the it field it's so difficult for women regardless of of color nationality race um women just have a tougher time in it especially when you go into more of the technical fields um, it's, it's, it's difficult to, um, it's difficult to gain, sometimes it's difficult for women to gain respect and demand respect in those fields. Um, and also I think the progression is also with women themselves. I think that women are starting to feel more confident. Like again, sometimes I think we hold, hold ourselves back. Um, based off preconceived notions or when you get in a room, if you are the only person that looks like you, it is some, it is intimidating. And so do you want to speak up? So now you're not letting your knowledge and skills and ability come across because you're not speaking up. And so sometimes we hold ourselves back. And so I do see the progression in, um, in the confidence of women that's sitting at the table to actually speak up when they're sitting at the table. Um, I'm seeing the progression of women kind of forcing themselves to be integrated when we first, when I would first start doing this, even in a meeting, I know it sounds small, but when a meeting is over, when everyone is sitting and after the meeting and chit chatting, that's when a lot of, that's when a lot of things happen, right? When you're in those environments, women typically didn't feel comfortable in those environments. So they're going to the desk, they're coming back. They're not integrating, right? They're not building those relationships and relationships is truly what's going to, going to, going to make you progress really it's not only your skills it's going to be your relationships the relationships that you build over time and I think women are starting to do that and they're also um, open to bringing other women up and that didn't used to be the case because it wasn't enough um, you know it was only so many that can be represented at one time right but now it's like come on girl come to the table you know so I do see a progression in women just really wanting to help one another um, so that's a, a long way of saying, yes, I see progression and, you know, the progression I see, Alexa, it makes me excited for where you're going, because some of the things I'm talking about, you may not even have that experience because you're going to walk through the door um, and, you know, and, and, and start from a position, hopefully, of, you know, confidence, because you've seen people that look like you in this industry, that you've seen that they do it, and you know that you can do it because you can, and you may have some adversities, but so does everyone else, right? Everyone has some form of an adversity, you know, yours may be being a Black woman, someone else is going to be something else, and so I would advise that you don't focus on that. You focus on your knowledge, you focus on your skills, and you focus on your ability. And if others want to focus on that, that's them. You walk into a room confident, you talk to who you want to talk to, when you want to talk, and how you want to talk. That was difficult for me because I would go and try to conform and sound all weird because I'm like, hi, trying to fit in here, you know, <laughs> and I definitely didn't. So when I really got comfortable and um, who I am, um, it, it helped, but I got comfortable with who I am by performing, by having skills, by knowing I know this work and passionate about this work. So my advice to you is focus on that, building that skill, building that experience and lead with that and not focus on these exterior issues that we run into. They're there, just don't focus on them. I totally agree. And I can say firsthand that I've been in college classes where I was the only female 
And it forces you to stand out and show what you know. The confidence you were talking about, it really brings it out of you. Yes. And that's good that you guys are putting an opportunity to uh, have those experiences in college, in a place that's safe, because that's what you take with you. When you go to college, it's not only about the degree, it's about those skill set, those soft skills, that confidence, being able to feel confident speaking up in a room, because that's that's the situation that you would be in, especially in this field. Definitely. And, um, we can open the questions up to the floor. I see there's one in the chat and it says, how would you advise someone who didn't major in IT who wants to get into the cybersecurity industry? Good question. Um, I didn't major in IT. I know plenty of people that did not major in IT. Um, it goes back to, um, there are so many different paths in, to get in this field, so many different paths. There's not really one right or wrong way. I would say, um, I want to, um, who, who asked the question? Can they just go off mute? Oh, I said on behalf of some students. <laughs> okay. And so I think that if um, the, the goal is really understanding what type of work you want to do. So first research and really think about your path, right? Do you like technical work? Do you like doing software development? Um, is it that you want to be some, you know, security engineer and then go and get experience? That's the, it doesn't matter. The degree to me, most of the time, they just ask, do you have a degree? <laughs> you know, again, my, my degree is in, in business um, and, and I have an MBA. Now, that's helpful if once I continue to progress and I want to manage these and I want to do strategic, now I already have this MBA so I can mix my business sense with uh, my cybersecurity knowledge. So um, again, find a way to get experience. You do not have to have an IT degree. Find a way to either um, volunteer. I know people that couldn't get a job um, and, and worked full-time and worked at the Geek Squad or Best Buy to build up their technical experience. Not that they needed to and not getting paid anything and running around town fixing computers, but that built up their technical, their technical skills. So you just have to be willing uh, to do the work to win, whatever that means. If that means working part-time at Best Buy to get experience, if that means giving away your services for free to get experience, that's how you do it. there any more questions? You can throw them out there whenever you're ready. I know we have the chair of the department on the line, uh, Dr. Diane Murphy. I'm not sure if she has any questions or wants to share. Well, hi, Dr. Murphy. Okay, I have one. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute myself. It's I've been on Zoom for seven, eight, eight hours today, so I should know how to do it by now. It now, happens to me all the time. <laughs> and one, of, one of the interesting things that you bring up and I think is really important is the role of the military, okay? And I, I, I think that uh, people don't recognize the value of having that military service and getting a great technical understanding. So I, I just like to hear a little bit more about, about why you joined uh, the military at 19 and you stayed there 10 years, which is a fair amount of time and, and how you progressed in the field in that time. Thank you, good question. Um, I joined the military um, and it was, it, it was obstacles to me joining the military. I joined the military um, really because um, I had kind of a tough upbringing. And so my initial thought was in the military, I get to get three meals a day and I get to have a roof over my head. Um, and so 
Um, that truly was the reason. And I was only going to stay in the military for four years. And, you know, I just wanted to go to the military and get enough so I can buy some furniture and I can move back to Chicago in my apartment. And I already have my furniture and I have a little savings. And then I'm going to go to school when I get back. That That is what I thought my path was. But um, what was I wrong um, the military is the best decision that I made is from a career perspective. Um, the best, the amount of the amount of experience that I gained in the military. And, and it, even when I say experience, I'm not only talking technical experience, but I got a lot of technical experience. I mean, I was pulling cable. I was a wire dog. They say I pull cables through buildings. I was able to build. I was building networks. I was building at Microsoft Exchange servers and DNS servers and um, you know, I got a, gained a lot of experience. Another thing I gained um, in the military is um, really understanding the ability to um, be integrated and be in a, di of a diverse, um, a very diverse environment. Um, and that was the first time that that had happened for me. And so I was so, again, it was a culture shock, but that experience I learned from working with different people and different perspectives and building relationships and collaboration and teamwork. And, you know, the military gives you this kind of all hands on deck type of feeling. I'm, I'm going to help you out. It doesn't matter, right? I'm going to do whatever I have to do um, to, to make sure this mission is successful. But that type of skill set, though, that's again, you know, not necessarily tangible. Um, was instrumental to where I am now. I would also say the military gives you the feeling, um, Alexis, and it sounds like you in a sorority. It gives you that. That's your sorority. That's your fraternity. It's wherever you go, when you look at, oh, okay, you were in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force. There's an immediate connection that has also helped me in my field. Um, that truly has. The building those relationships were, were very important, but um, those technical skills help. And then learning how to be a, an amazing follower and an amazing leader. Um, people always focus on leadership, um, but the military really teaches you the importance of um, being a great follower because that is important. Um, it's, it is important to support those that you are uh, hired to support. And it also teaches you how to lead because you might be following this person, but you're really trying to make sure that mission is successful. At the same time, you may be leading your team. So you may be doing it simultaneously, but it does, it, it's, it's a um, really great foundation for many things, um, even outside of the technical experience. Definitely. And I have Air Force family. I've seen the networking that they can do. Yeah. I've seen the stability that they have, the the training that they've gotten and Absolutely. how they incorporate it into the present day. Um, I think it's amazing. It is. I, I am definitely pro-military, even after college, if that is a choice for some, you know, because you can go into if you go to the military after college, you could you you can go in as an officer. So you still go in as a you know higher ranking and management, and you gain more experience. So that's definitely an option, actually a, a good option, and you will gain that experience there. So I would say even the people coming out of you know people graduating, you know look at the look at the Air Force as well. That's another option. Definitely been looking. <laughs> But um, someone else in the chat said, what is one key thing that you would present to your younger self? What kind of advice would you give? Oh, deep, deep. Who asked that? Um, hmm. That is a hard one. Um, you know, that's... That's difficult because um, everything that my younger self went through, I needed it and I needed to learn it in the way that I learned it. I needed to go through those obstacles to get where I am today. So that's why I said it's, it's difficult. Um, you know, I, I think maybe one thing that I, I could have learned earlier is... Um, 
is it's okay for me to lean into my personality. When I was in these fields because I look different, um, you know, I really attempted to conform and I, I didn't, it was difficult for me being from Chicago, being from the military, being from, it's like, sometimes I want to like pop off and other times I want to salute and other times I want to, so it's like, a, you know, when you have so many roles, um, and that's what I would say. You have a, a lot of different roles. Um, it was difficult for me to be um, authentic initially. Um, and it, whether it was because maybe, you know, apprehensive about acceptance, um, you know, I used to be very conscious about my accent because I would sound so different. Um, so I, I think I would tell my younger self that it's okay. You are from Chicago. This is how you sound and you are good enough. Right. So that that's I would say that's the only thing that I can think of that I would tell my younger self. But honestly, um, I take the good with the bad and I think it builds character and it was needed. But that's if I had to think of something, that's what it would be. OK, and um, jumping back to present day and your business, what were some of the obstacles that you and your business partner faced at the beginning stages of your business and how did you overcome them? Hmm. I think one obstacle, uh, we, we faced a couple of obstacles, quite a few. Um, some that I will point out um, is number one, um, funding. When we started our company, um, first I said we started our company. With, so when I tell you about sacrifice, we sacrifice. We started our company. We didn't pay ourselves for four years. We paid ourselves zero dollars for four years and my partner did not have a job. And, and what we would do is everything that came up, we would go half to half. You have a business plan, girl, you have 3000, give me a second. Let me go promote this party. Here's my 3000. I mean, we really split like everything half to half for everything that we did. We were not able to get funding. We had never been able to get any type of banking loan to this day. Um, and that was probably the, you know, th that was an obstacle for us, but we, we just worked it out and there's other different ways to get lending. And so once we got out, we just kept going though. Once we got our first contract, then we figured out how do I, you know, how do I, how do I pay this support? And every, just every single, uh, obstacle, we just like Nike, just do it. We got over the hurdle. We figured out how to do the next one. And there were a lot. The other obstacles um, is, um, now that I think about it, so funny because we were very um, um, confident because I think about this now, we didn't know how to write a proposal. We didn't know about government contracting. The only thing we knew is I did cybersecurity and, um, and my partner had run businesses in the past. So we, we didn't know how to do anything. We would go submit proposals. And of course I'm cybersecurity SME. I'm so smart. Let me go submit this proposal. It's gonna be great. And they would rate it from like, you know, one to 10. I think we got a zero if that was possible. And it was like, oh, you know, I failed. And we would just, even that, we took every single obstacle as a learning lesson. When we failed, we got the zero. We would call the call the 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 agency up that gave us the zero and say, "Hey, you mind us coming in so you can tell us why we got the zero? We we're not fighting back. We just want to understand." So we would go in. People would sit with us. They would explain, and they could tell we were probably lost. Um, and I think during that time, we just start being able to using. Uh, there is a lot of free resources in this area, so you have a, a there's a lot of classes you can take from SBA. There's a lot of classes offered through like um, women organizations from uh, PTAC. It's just there's a lot of free classes, and um, because of those obstacles, you know, we look for a solution. And remember, we didn't have any money, so we look for the free solution. But what happened is we gained some partnerships and some support that you can't believe. Even to this day, those people that were, that was with us five years ago, when I say they're rooting for us, they're even telling the story. I remember we got that zero, you know, <laughs> but uh, because we were so open and honest and really went out and researched and, you know, um, asked for knowledge and assistance, that type of help, um, 
uh, those, those obstacles, we got through them. Um, and we actually had a good time getting through those obstacles. <laughs> takeaway is if you fall brush yourself off regroup yeah. try again learn yes. from your mistakes always be open to guidance and feedback absolutely and research um research resources there are so many resources i feel like we built this company from from google we have a degree from google and free resources you know, and take advantage of those and, you know, really focus on what you know, in this field, focus on winning, be a winner. It's not easy out there. Go out there knowing I am going to yeah, what up, man? How you feel? If you're on, um, go on mute if you're not on mute. Okay. Yeah. Focus on winning, whatever you have to do to win. And I'm not saying compete, focus on yourself and what does it take for you to win? And, you know, and that's what you do. Can I ask one more question? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, this is Diane Murphy again. Have you, uh, one, one of the things that, um, that we require our students to do is an internship. Have, have you looked as a company about uh, using interns? Um, Definitely. Um, definitely. We've had, uh, we'll small, so we're, we're based out of DC. We are, uh, we have 40 employees at this, at this time. Um, and so we're just getting to the point, cause you know, it was a lot about kind of building our infrastructure building our company. So we just started putting an internship program in place. So we've had one intern, uh, the intern came from, uh, the air force. So that's where we got that intern, but we have had um, um, lots of conversations about um, really building a partnership with local schools and seeing if we can, um, you know, really start partnering to do some of that internship. So I'm definitely open um, if if that's an offer. It's an offer. <laughs> okay, then we have to follow up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yes, for our students. Because really, that's what it's about, building relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I, before I came to Marymount, I was a, a, a government contractor, had my own business, too. So I'm very familiar with uh, the stories that you tell about getting started and, uh, you know, finding your way. Um, uh, but I, I finally sold my company, got too big. And so, uh, which is good, right? Uh, that, that's a good problem to have. What was, what was too big? Uh, I, I, had, I had about um, 70 employees and mm -hmm. uh, I just wasn't doing anything technical anymore, right? At a certain time, you become more of a manager, people yeah. person. And, you know, I used to go home to my husband and say, all I do is babysit you know, between the employees and the customers and you and the kids. And so I, 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 I sold the business and became an academic, but I, I know the struggles that you went through uh, and the rewards that you get from it. So congratulations on all your hard work. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I congratulate you to, to have the ability to build a company up to 70 and you chose to, sold, to sell. So congratulations to you. I know how, uh, how hard that was and definitely understand the pain when it comes to moving from doing technically what you are accustomed to doing to managing. Definitely. Any more questions, comments? Okay, well, I have had a lovely conversation with you, Ms. Lanye Ford. I have all this advice stored, is absorbing. I'm definitely going to use it in my future upon my graduation, just in life. And, you know, also use me as a resource, right? It's also about building the, you know, building your network. And it could be simply, you know, asking advice, having someone that's non-biased that can help you along the way. I would be honored to be able to help you with that, with your journey. So, you know, feel free 
to reach out if you need anything from me. I know my partner's on here. She would say the same thing. So if you need something from us in general, um, and I, I'm very excited about your future. Uh, I think cloud is the way to go. Uh, so congratulations on that. Definitely the way to go. It's the way the world is going. So um, congratulations to you. And thank you for taking the time to interview me. I appreciate that. Have a LinkedIn. We could drop that in the chat. Yes, I will drop it in the chat, and it is just um, pretty simple. My name, and I, and we have a company page. So yeah, so I dropped that in the chat. Please, you know, again, feel free, reach out. Anyway, and that's for any, if there are even um, other students um, on the call or um, even some adults <laughs> that students that's like, hey, I wanna change my career field or I'm trying to get in cybersecurity. Age is nothing but a number. So reach out if you have questions as well. I wanna be a resource. Well, we are so delighted that you came to share your experience, your knowledge. I know that I learned a lot. Um, I always learn a lot when I hear you speak. So I'm like, Alexis, I'm absorbing it too. Look, I'm ready to change my career. Sign me up. <laughs> Come on over. Come on over to this side. Just could you leave us just with a few words of inspiration um, just uh, about you know, being a, a woman professional or just a professional in this industry and, and just during this time, um, please, Monia. Yes, oh, sure. Um, I, you know, I, I think I weaved in a, 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 um, a couple of topics that I would leave you with. Um, you know, one thing in, um, in this field, you know, with many fields and especially when it comes um, to women. So the advice is I'm, I'm first going to start there is really focus on winning. We don't always have to humble ourselves. Um, it is tough, um, but focus on your skill set, your knowledge, focus on what is it going to take you to win and, and, and build that up. And the more you build your skill set and your knowledge, you're going to build your confidence. And so in the more that you build your confidence, when you are in rooms, you're going to feel comfortable speaking up and talking because you see a lot of women that come in, even when they're invited to the table, they still don't necessarily speak up because they're uncomfortable. But if you do that foundation of, hey, I know this, I know this. So I'm confident talking about because I know this. Right. And then that's going to demand a level of respect without you. Um, hooping and hollering and screaming and getting emotional. What's going to demand respect is coming in and being solutions-based and, 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 um, and, and your skill set. Um, I would also say, um, as you, once, once you get again until, once you mature in your role and you have that confidence, um, do not be afraid to negotiate and also do not allow once you get into these environments because it is tough you know the thing that some of us do when things get tough um well they say when things get tough it's tough and get, they get going don't do that don't let someone else um don't let someone else control your narrative don't let someone because you have a boss that doesn't like you and it's so tough i'm just gonna quit no, don't do that. You there to win. Wait them out. Do what you have to do. Perform. But don't do not let others force you to quit or change or um, change your goals. Um, the other thing I would say is um, plan, you know, really sit down and think about where is it you want to be in life and then work backwards from there. Think about your goal. I want to be here. Then once you decide that, then you decide what do I need to do to win? What do I need to do to get to that? And you stay that path. Um, of course, there's going to be some deviations, but, but really plan and stay the path so that you, um, so that you reach your goals. So, um, and then I would say have fun. Have fun. This industry is fun. It's technical. It's tough, but you know it's fun. You have to have passion for it. As many people, as people I know on, on on this call that we're in IT, we can sit and talk about for hours, and it's fun to us. 
It's fun. So this is a fun industry. It's difficult um, in some cases, but, you know, really, you know, still attempt to enjoy yourself. You know, attempt to enjoy yourself because, you know, success is more like a journey versus a destination. So enjoy it during the whole journey. Lanye, it looks like we have maybe one question. James, do you have your hand up? If so, you can unmute yourself to ask the question. <clears throat> if, if not, then... Okay. It may have been an accident, huh? Perhaps. We're waiting, James. Okay, maybe that was a mistake. Well, thank you, Lonnie, for joining us. Um, if anyone else wants to come off the mute or show themselves on camera so we can see everyone here, we'd love that. Okay, let's let's see who's brave enough to show themselves on camera <laughs> since you called them out. <laughs> okay. No one. <laughs> hey, Benjamin. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Ben, how are you? <laughs> hey, Lonnie, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm happy you could join. I'm happy I got the invite. I really enjoy getting to hear more of your story and your background. It's great. No, no problem. Thank you. And for the people on the call, Benjamin has a very strong cybersecurity background as well and, and more on the technical side of things and supports us on our USDA contract. So there's actually a wealth of resources on these calls, even outside of myself. So thanks, Ben, for joining. Uh, again, happy to uh, be able to listen to you speak. It was great. Thank you. Looks like James wanted to say that all of this was gold. <laughs> okay, so thank good. You, James, for your comment. <laughs> My name is Ryan, but yeah, I, I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ryan. Hello, my name is my name is Nathia, and um, although I am not um, technical, I'm not cybersecurity. I was um, Arlo Solutions' first intern, first and only intern. So um, I just retired from the military, like like I said. And although I'm not technical, I have learned a wealth of knowledge in cybersecurity. I think I will be in the next couple of years or so without ever having to take a class because the company is so technical. Um, but Arlo is also a great company to work for and a great company to intern with because they taught me everything. Um, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So yeah, if you all want to intern and you know this can be a, a team, a partnership, that would be awesome. And whoever you all send to Arlo will gain so much knowledge. And that's it. Thank you, Nathia. All right. Well, it's about seven o'clock. Thank you all for joining us. Um, please follow the social media links that uh, we were able to drop into the chat. Um, and we look forward to you trying to continue to join us for more programs at Marymount throughout the semester. Thank you again to Alexis, our senior. Let's give her a round of applause. We're Great so job. Thank yeah, you, you did a fabulous you. job. You did. Great job. Thank you, Ms. Lanye, for doing this. I think we all got a lot out of it. No, no problem. Anytime. And good luck. And you guys have a great evening. Thank you for having me. Have a good night, everyone.